All right, everyone, I want to welcome you all to uh, another fine episode of Here's Why You're Wrong. I am Mick. This is Jim. Welcome. We've got Mike over there in the booth. Hello. And uh, today is kind of a special show, right, Jim? We, uh, this is our last pre-recorded show. It is. Right? So this is very exciting. Uh, starting in July, we are going to be headed out live on the air. So those of you who have been watching uh, the pre-recorded shows at home and wanting to scream at your television and tell us uh, how wrong we are, you're finally going to get your shot uh, to uh, watch us live and call in and disagree with us and do, do whatever you want. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be exciting. So July 18th will be our first uh, live show, and um, that's going to be exciting stuff. So hopefully you're ready for that, Jim. You ready? I'm ready. All right. We're, um, we've got uh, sort of a mixed bag of topics tonight. We're going to talk about um, bullying, uh, which is um, a semi-specific topic, and we're going to pair that up with a general discussion about parenting and kids today and, you know, what's the matter with these kids today, Jim? I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, every, every generation feels that way, I think, about the kids that they see around them, and uh, so I thought we would talk about that uh, because I feel like it ties in a little bit with bullying, the way parents handle that, respond to that, and, and so on and so forth. So, um, so bullying um you know it feels like and i don't know what your high school experience was jim or your your even middle school experience um but mine was one of you know i really decided i was going to be different in high school and i had you know dog collars and chains and blue hair and it was just look out folks mick is here and, and i want everybody to know it and um as a result, this is in Indiana, you know, mm -hmm. like the Midwest, and, uh, you know, it, it was very white bread, middle America, and um, so I got harassed mercilessly, and... Um, but you kind of enjoyed it. <laughs> you know, people have said that many times. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know that I enjoyed that part. I felt like I desperately didn't want to fit in. I wanted to be special and be different. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think I genuinely liked the look, you know, the combat boots and the, all that stuff. And, um, but it doesn't play well in, in the Midwest. And, you know, I, the jocks pick me up and throw me into lockers and, you know, it called fag all day. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, it was just merciless. So and I you got bullied, but you, you... I was asking for it. You were asking right? for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, does anybody really ask to be bullied? Um, you know, I mean, maybe that's our first question. Yeah, Mike? Yeah, I hope you're kidding with that quip, Jim. <laughs> that I was asking for it? <laughs> yeah, he said you were asking for it. I mean, you were being yourself, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny because when you're 15 or 14 even, nobody knows what, who yourself really is. I mean, uh, I look back now, and I don't know why I chose that path. I um, certainly was not a conscious decision on my part. I was coming into a new school, in fact, where everybody else had been in the same middle schools, and then they fed into high school. So they all knew each other. And I came from a different state. I was coming out of Chicago, didn't know anybody. So I felt like I can reinvent myself here and just start over fresh. And um, I think I genuinely liked the way that it looked. The Did chains you? But and, you had a lot of friends as well. Not when I started. Okay. I didn't have any. And um, I made friends quickly. I was more, I was involved in choir and drama uh -huh. and things like that. And so I made friends with that crowd. And I found my sort of niche and people learned who I was. And I became fairly popular by junior year. And I had tons of friends mm -hmm. and lots of jock friends and, uh, you know, all, yeah. all different kinds because they learned that I was, you know, kind of a funny, a clown type of guy. Um, but, uh, you know, it was certainly rough that first year, freshman year. Um, I was just miserable because people were making fun of me. And, and, yeah, I sort of brought it on myself by choosing this outrageous look that didn't fit in with the town. Um, but, um, you know, it was sort of miserable. And um, it's, this is something that has gone on uh, for probably hundreds of years. Bully I mean, you know, ever since there's been schools, there's probably been bullying. I mean, um, every, every movie that you watch now, there's, you know, some crazy jock stuffing a kid into a locker and pulling his underwear up over his head. And I don't know that that really exists. Did that happen to you? No. Okay. I got, I did get thrown into lockers. You know, the jocks would be coming down the right. hallway and sort of toss you aside. Um, but um, it seems like we hear more and more about it these days. Uh, kids 
committing suicide and killing themselves over this. And part of this is we've got this whole online presence now. And um, kids are, uh, you know, making fun of each other online. Pictures and videos last forever these days. I mean, imagine if people had camera phones back in our day, you know, and you got caught doing something stupid on, you know, somebody captured right. it, now it's on YouTube. Now all your friends are watching it. How embarrassing. And so it sort of takes things to a new level. And I guess my question is, this is a long-winded way of me getting to a question, but um, are people being bullied more now? Or are we just hearing more about it because of the media and that sort of thing? I mean, what do you think compared to when well, you were Well, I school? think that uh, kids, um, the suicides, did, did that happen in the 50s and 60s? I don't think suicides happened, huh? I wouldn't think so. <clears throat> Certainly didn't when I was a kid. I mean, I don't remember. I mean, we had some tragic things happen when I was in high school, but I, uh, nothing like a suicide. Or I mean, you've got, you know, girls who have image, image, self-image issues, and you know, their friends make fun of them online, and they post things on Facebook about them, and they end up committing suicide at home. You've got this gay college student who jumped off the bridge because his roommate. Uh, I mean, allegedly because his roommate, you know, recorded him doing something, and and outed him, which is not really what the case was, but um, it still sort of got framed as a bullying issue. And then the, the flip side of that is the kids that become aggressive toward other people. As a result of being bullied? Of being bullied or, yeah. Didn't the, the Columbine kids, didn't they, um, well, were reacting to um, being bullied at school but about how they looked or... Right. Yeah. And... Um, I think a lot of these sort of lone gunman types, uh, you know, if you look back, have been bullied at, at, at some point or another, and, um, you know, that doesn't make it okay to do anything, but um, it's sort of, um, you know, becomes sort of an excuse for the media to put a spotlight on things, like, well, these kids were bullied, and so they went and shot 20 people, or these kids were bullied, so they committed suicide, and, um, you know, I instinctively it feels to me and from my experience with my kids it feels like there's less bullying today uh, I don't now I'm not in high school now so it's hard for me to make that statement but I think that the flip side of this bad media is all the TV shows that people have access to and the, and the different um, movies and things that sort of um, play up people's uniqueness and, and talk about how it's okay to be yourself Glee was such a popular show for a while that had Lots of openly gay characters and all these things that it was. A but very those characters, show. those characters are connected. Or like you, you were bullied, but you also created um, a group of friends that you. So you had a, a peer group that you could relate to and talk to, mm -hmm. and interact with. Where I think some of these kids that commit suicide um, are unable to make connections with other kids in their peer group mm -hmm. and are alone and and unable to express. You know suicidal feelings or you know um, have this a support group um. I agree with that but so if somebody bullies a, another kid and they go and commit suicide is it the bully's fault I mean is it what is it manslaughter is it no it's, it's not murder one I don't think it's the kid's fault I think I mean it's such a it's it's a cliche but the parents really have to instill like a lot of confidence yeah in their kids and say look Life sucks. People are hard on you. you know? Right. Well, that's why I, I did this sort of mixed topic of bullying and parenting today, because I feel like they're really mm -hmm. important together. And the, the family is the core, is, is where everything starts from. So, I mean, in the straight world, the gay world, the family, and your <clears throat> perception of yourself as a human being and your um, self-worth um, stems from your family, you know, your early family. and. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of families are not, are broken families or, um, you know, single moms. Um, so, yeah, the family, business relationships, how, how you treat people in the business world, um, all stems from that, from that initial family. Family is, I mean, and this is thousands of years. I mean, family has always been, you know, super important to who you become and how you approach life. And whether whether or not you succeed in life, and um, you know, if if when a child commits suicide or or <coughs> does something um, 
as a reaction to bullying, um, it's not the fault necessarily of the, of the bully. I mean, they shouldn't be bullying, certainly, but there's a larger mental health issue here. Someone doesn't get bullied and go from, uh, from zero to suicide in five seconds. They have a troubled past already. They, they don't, mm -hmm. like you say, they don't feel like they have peer groups to talk to. Um, and that's something that really should have been caught way early on by parents and, and, and by being more involved in their child's life and saying, geez, my, my kiddo is not doing so well right now. Um, and, I mean, it's not like Johnny wakes up one day, gets made fun of at school, and then kills himself that night. It just, I don't feel like it happens that way. These kids are, are troubled to begin with and maybe um, are not getting the attention that they need at home or not getting the help they need. It's also a lot of pressure on one person to feel like, well, see, you just made him kill himself. He just went off and killed himself, you know. For the bully, you mean for the bully that for, gets blamed for, the for bully, it? I mean, I can understand if it's going on and on and on and on, but I think it's just a lot of responsibility. I mean, we've all said mean things to each other. Mm-hmm. We've all made bad decisions. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a lot of responsibility to put on one kid. Mm -hmm. For sure. And it, I mean, and there's extreme cases like the, um, I mean, I, I guess I don't know what the division between bullying and hazing is. You know, I mean, you hear these stories, you heard the stories about hazing and, you know, football teams do it and bands do it. I mean, this Florida band, college band, you know, killed, the, the boy died on the bus from this hazing ritual, and they haven't really gone into detail about what it was, but I think they were just... Well, they do it in the military, too. Yeah, they do it all over the place, and I, I have never understood that. I mean, I we don't do it in the choir or in the drama club. You know, th there's no hazing really there. I mean, I take that back. Uh, not in the way that we think of it. You try to trick some kid into shaving his legs, you know, before the play. You tell him, oh, yeah, everybody shaves their legs, and then they go shave their legs, and you make fun of them the next day. Okay. I guess that's hazing. Um, see, feels... Can you laugh at yourself? I mean, you know, some kids might well go yeah. nuts and either kill themselves right. or get a gun and you you right. made fun of me, I'm going to get you back. So Yeah, so who knows? Who knows if that's harmless or not? I think, I certainly don't think the kids that, that do it with a negative result did it with the intent of killing someone or making that person commit suicide or harming them. To them, it seems like it's innocent and that this is just what we do, you know. I remember one fight I got into in junior high school. I think that was the only fight through junior and uh, and high school that I got into. But it physical, was one kid, yeah, physical fight, yeah, that kept harassing me and harassing me. And I'm a pretty passive guy, I think. <laughs> you are. Um, but finally, I the, I was in wood shop working on the disc sander, and he came up behind me and pushed me, and I almost my hands almost. <sighs> And so I said, fine, wow. let's go out and fight. I mean, if you want to fight. So we went out and rolled around on the grass and slugged each other for a while. And then he was my friend. And I yeah, I never quite understood the, the need to do that. But it helped a lot. And, and it ended after that. So the point is, I guess, you have to stand up for yourself at some point. Right. And, uh, you know. And, and kick some ass if uh, if somebody's harassing you. I mean, you got to stand up for yourself at some point. Um, I, I never did team sports or whatever really very much. Um, and I, I really watch when my kids grow up and I see, especially Alexa being female and being involved in basketball, I see the value of that building self-confidence and mm -hmm. building teamwork. You know, I, part of it is my father um, probably should have been on medication for, you know, at some point. But, uh, you know. Everybody could use a little therapy. Yeah, the a little therapy. Um, but, um, yeah, um, it's been, been very helpful bo for both of my kids to be involved in team sports. And um, uh, Mason did Taekwondo for a while. And uh, um, it's just, I think that's very helpful. Um, and you need to stand up for yourself if somebody's being aggressive toward you. Um, you know, again, it comes back to the family and the family dynamics um, is, you know, in my family, my father was very aggressive. My mother was passive aggressive because she couldn't directly confront. Um, so, uh, you know, you kind of absorb that, what you see and what works, you know, it's, but as you become an adult, you have to, um, you know, maybe give up the neurotic um, uh, mechanisms that you developed in order to survive, um, in order to function in the world in a 
in a reasonable and productive manner. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. And, and, and dovetails nicely into the parenting discussion. Parenting, yeah. I mean, it's by far the hardest thing I've had to do. I mean, it's, it's brutal. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I think everybody's parents tell them at some point, you know, boy, I hope you have kids just like you someday, you know, and then I'll teach you. And um, I sort of look back at my childhood now having kids and knowing how difficult mm -hmm. it is as a parent. You look back at your childhood and you say, hey, yeah, I was kind of a pain in the butt to my mom and, or my dad, and, geez, I should have listened here. I should have done that. Um, your dad, well, you had kind of a different upbringing. I mean. I did. Was I did. Your, your mom wasn't at home when you were 14 or 15, right? Right. And your dad was quite a bit older. He was, yeah. Yeah, my dad was quite a bit older. He was, when I was in high school, uh, my dad was in his 70s. And so he kind of just let you do what you wanted. Very free range. Yeah. yeah and that, Did he ever yell at you? or? Rarely. Okay. Very rarely. And Did you know, he give you any advice? Uh, when I sought it out. Did he ever hit you with his cane? No. <laughs> no. He did not need a cane uh, all the way up till he died. I don't did he have just a... Kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. You know my father's dead now? <laughs> no, I'm just... I'm just kidding, from, buddy. It's okay. You didn't bully him or anything? No, no, okay. no, no. There was no bullying involved there. But right. um, a parenting styles vary widely. And I've it's been interesting for me as I raise my kids and I volunteer at the school and I go to these functions and things to see how other kids are raised mm -hmm. and get a little glimpse into their family life. And then to then think about my own upbringing, you know, and now sort of matching that up with the parents I see today. Like, oh, okay. They're raising these kids like my buddy Timmy's parents raised him, or now mm -hmm. I can see this correlation here. And um, there's no right answer in how to raise your kids. Um, but, you know... I think you can... Uh, what's the word? Ameliorate or make better? Maybe um, what you did not get or you got that was maybe a little messed up growing mm -hmm. up from your parents. Mm -hmm. When you are a parent then you have the opportunity to go back through that from the other side mm -hmm. and maybe correct or deal with some of the unfinished business that you have mm -hmm. from your parents growing up. Well, there's a danger inherent in that, though, and that is raising your kids and trying to fix yourself through your kids. Right, or and live, not live your life right. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you need to find, as with so many things in life, there's a balance here. There's a happy medium. And... Um, Parents are all over the map today. I mean, there's, you know, super strict parenting styles. There are super relaxed. I'm when was my your, kid's buddy when, when, when was your dad born? What year? 23, 1923. Okay, so he was uh, about 10, 12 years younger than my father. But they're both mm -hmm. in that generation, the greatest generation. Did you ever read that right. book? Yep. Yeah. Um, A plus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you read it? Phenomenal. Okay, I'll have to read it. No. <laughs> um, but I, that generation, I mean, like my father, you would go up to hug him or whatever, and he was like stiff as a board. They just, it was hard to show display, emotion. not yeah. display emotion. I mean, imagine living through the Depression or whatever where, you know, unemployment uh, was at 30% and their, you know, food was an issue. Um, well, and these people went to war and, 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 and came to go back, to war, saw yeah. Horrifying things, and then they had to come back and just sort of pick up where they left off right. and never talk about it again. I mean, the the option of going to get some therapy after you got home from the war that that did not exist in no, 1946. No, yeah. I mean, you know, you were weak if you yeah. show any kind of yeah. Suck it up and let's go. Right. You yeah. Know, full speed ahead. And um, or the other birds in the nest are going to peck you to death. Yeah. yeah ooh, <laughs> interesting analogy. Well, kind of, you know, in nature, you know, isn't like you get a, a nest with birds and one of them's really weak, the other birds kind of peck it to death or whatever, and, you I know. I can see that, yeah. So does that, it, does that transfer to human interactions and... Survival of the fittest? Um, yeah, I don't know. You know. I, I suppose it does. I mean... I guess that's where the... It, we we are living in such a different age today, and I am constantly. It's easy to get sort of terrified when you look at kids today, and um, and this is not um, 
this is not anything to do with specifically how kids are today. Um, but, oh, and I want to remind people, give us a call, 503-207-7135. Oh, yes. We're sitting here BSing. Oh, no, I yeah, forget. call us. Well, I also want to ask you guys, so what do you think about these administrations that let it go on, like these school administrations? I mean, you hear, I mean, I'm sure the truth is somewhere in the middle, but do you think that they, they bear some responsibility for protecting that campus and letting it be a... A healthy and safe learning environment? Well, I think you're talking mostly about sports teams or organized things that they know what's going on, right? I mean, you know, because bullying in general, you know, I, I, I am surprised at how little the staff at certain places know what's going on. Um, and I don't know that they really see what's happening with the kids. Well, then you have the um, social issues, gayness and, um, mm -hmm. you know, the LGBT. Mm -hmm issues, the, um, I don't know, the, the different religions, you know, um, you know, if you're a, a Muslim female and you're wearing, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the headscarf or whatever, anything, I think kids, anything that puts you out of the ordinary mm -hmm. um, is going to, you know, attract that kind of, uh, of negative attention. Mm -hmm. um, so... I don't know where I'm going with that. So, <laughs> so you just end uh, there. So, well, you know, uh, uh, I think Mike maybe. So has we have something. a Dylan on the air. I, I know Dylan. Dylan Thomas. No, close. The author. Bob Dylan. Close. I, named after Bob Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. All right. Uh, so Dylan, you there? I am. No. Oh, all right. We can hear you. Go for it. Okay. Good. Um. So I have a few things to say about bullying, but I also have a question that I'll attempt to try to get through it all as fast as I can. Okay. But um, basically, you know, me being a younger person, I know uh, kind of how the bullying stuff works. Not not that I've been bullied or that I am a bully, but I just I kind of understand people who do bully. Right. Well, you're. You're in school uh, now, and so to just to give people some context here, you probably understand bullying these days much more than Jim or I do because it's been a long time since we were in school, so you see a lot more than we do. Yes, and it's more so that bullying or becoming a bully just doesn't really end because if you are bullied by a bully, um, then... You have a few options, but primarily you you either take it in and like eventually commit suicide, or you yourself become a bully to let out all of that frustration. That could be your personal life, or it could be the fact that you're bully. But it's kind of an endless spawn of bullies. Mm -hmm. but, do, and, but do you think Dylan it has to be either or? Um, you think those are the only two options? No, there's a few options. It's just these days, that's kind of the only ones that they think to choose. Well, I mean, I think, and it's a little bit cliche, but when when you get bullied in school, sometimes parents will say, you know, well, you know what? That young man that bullied you uh, comes from a very unhappy home, and he's just bullying you because he was bullied himself. And that's, it's cliche, but it's true. I mean, um, well, and if that kid has a support system around him, you know, maybe he can find some empathy for that bully, but then if you have, if the kid has no support system and no friends in the school, mm -hmm. and somebody, he has no recourse, no nowhere to go. Well, and I feel, I do genuinely feel bad for bullies when I when I hear about it, and, and um, I think Dylan probably does too, and that you... You know something's wrong at home, and that's why these kids are acting out. And um, you know it's of course hurtful to be bullied, but um, you you also sort of feel sympathetic for them and feel like, oh man, you know, if he's if he's this mean at school, just imagine what he's going through at home. Or you know, I wonder if his dad beats him, or he, you know. Guys, do you think? I mean, is there any research on the bullying and suicide numbers in other countries, like some third world countries, like? I wonder what the suicide rate was like during, during um, like the Holocaust. I mean, if you want to go to the nth degree, well, is it because we're spoiled and we're very sensitive? 
we're very young as a country and we're very entitled. Well, there's a whole other, and that's that's more the topic of parenting, and I'm going to get to some of those thoughts in a second. Let me let me see if Dylan had anything else that, uh, Dylan, did you say you had something else you wanted to add? Yes. Go um, for it. Yeah. So, basically, if I'll kind of go through a timeline here. So, say you are being bullied and you have all those options you can take, but when it comes to the bully's point of view, mm -hmm. then, I mean, they have to be doing it for a reason, and that could be several things. It could be that nobody pays attention to them. It could be that they just need to blow off some steam, but maybe, like, their father beats them, and that's because they have a really crappy life, and maybe they have a really crappy life because the father didn't get a good education, but it's it just doesn't really make sense when it all comes down to the person getting bullied or becoming a bully when they have to suffer because of other people's problems. Mm -hmm. So, Dylan, have, have, have you experienced any bullying yourself? Um, or what have you seen? Have, have, uh, have, have you seen other people getting bullied? Have you bullied me? Um, well, not not the term that one would call bullying nowadays, but I, I try. Anyway, um, I have not really witnessed bullying in action, or I have not been bullied, and I have not bullied people. Yeah, I feel like it's, um, I mean, the definition of bully and um, sort of what we were talking about, that, that cycle of parents or, or bullies getting bullied that turns them into a bully and then bullying someone else is sort of this vicious cycle that it's tough to get out of. Um, thanks for calling in, Dylan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep talking about this, but thanks for, uh, thanks for your call. Thank you. No problem. Uh, um, what I was getting at before when I lost my train of thought was if there are certain prejudices that, say, in a school where the administration maybe has certain uh, beliefs or prejudices, maybe they, you know, believe that being gay is a sin or whatever, they may allow that kind of thing to go on um, uh, and, and, not, and not stop it when they see it because they feel that, you know, this person is bringing it on themselves. Or if they see somebody with a dog collar and blue hair, they may say, well, that person deserves to be... You uh, think the school administration th is thinking that? Well, maybe some teachers or, or administrators. I don't know. I mean... Um, I don't know. I, in today's litigious society, I think they are all terrified of something happening on their watch. So I don't think that they would consciously make a decision to let it go because that's their belief structure. Well, watch that movie. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it's possible. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Mike was mentioning, you know, is it because we're arrogant or, or the sense of entitlement? And, you know, there's an aspect of, of kids today, and I alluded to this earlier, in that... Um, it's easy to look at the at the current generation and feel like, oh my God, the we're going to hell in a handbasket here. You know, kids today have got the internet, they've got four phones and iPods and things, and they're just they're staring at input all the time, and uh, they don't know how to talk anymore. They're all texting, and they're all you know. It's easy to feel like, wow, we've we've gone astray. And and well, a lot of there's a lot of child poverty too. I mean, I guess if you can believe, yeah, the statistics. But we're um, not exposed to that. I mean, those of us in sort of middle-class suburbia. So far. So far. Mick, there is, do you really think that, you're talking about the middle class. Is there even a middle class? There's I, 25 million Americans on food stamps. Yeah. And you were talking about the middle class. Well, they're not in the middle class. But, I mean. Is there still a middle class? Absolutely. How many, how many, isn't there, there's like, what are, 2,500 homeless children in the Beaverton School District? Is that right? Yeah. And, and well, also, if the middle class is living month to month, then they're not really middle class. Well, then you can redefine the term middle class, but that can't you can't say there isn't one. Okay. And and it's it, the the whole homeless thing is because they're redefining the term homeless. It's not there's not 25 kids in the Beaverton School District who li are living out of a shopping cart under a bridge. That's not what they mean by homeless. Um, but but rather you know some people. What did they mean? Staying with friends or living on, uh, on a friend's couch. Uh, you mean they've chosen to leave their parents' house and? No, 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 no. The parents and the child uh, are 
are have gotten evicted or, or something, something, but they're staying with relatives because they lost That's their job. Well, I mean, imagine what that would be like. I know, it's difficult. Yeah, I'm not it's saying not it's not difficult, but it's not living under a bridge like the term homeless would make I think you think. I think the middle class is being hollowed out in this country. And um, I think that's probably true. We're going to head far afield from parenting are, in a minute. We are, you know, becoming a human commodities that are competing in a global environment uh, for work. And uh, the, the, the business, I'm sorry, but I mean, you have to say that the, the business of capitalism is to make a profit. And Jim, Jim's getting on his capitalist well, discussion again. Well, capital, I mean, the, it will spend a dollar to make a dollar, and it will, it does not care about, it has no soul. Uh, I, Capitalists are bullies. Is that your thesis? Um, <laughs> to some extent, that's true. You know, I That's mean, fine, but capitalism can only exist if people continue to buy things from it. And we continue to buy into capitalism, and therefore it still exists. Okay. We can't. You can't get mad at capitalists. I'm not saying. Uh, not for bad parenting or causing bullies, or I mean, I'm that's a reach. I'm saying that wages and benefits for the general worker in the United States have been stagnant or declining since the 70s. I think that's probably true. And once they figured out, they being corporations, that they don't have to pay a living wage and benefits and abide by environmental regulations if they send their business to China or India or Bangladesh so I can wear this shirt here. Um, but do you think they have bullying and, and, and parenting yes, issues they in have China and Bangladesh? That, of course they they keep the workers in the factories right. by force and right. lock the doors and then... Well, so, so we've made it beyond that. So certainly we're... Well, hopefully we're... But I, are we heading that direction? I mean, it's like we kind of went like... Is this happening now? Well, so there's always, you know, when it comes to parenting and almost anything else in life, there is this sort of wave effect and this sort of natural correction that okay. happens with everything, I think. And I agree. Like a pendulum, right? Yes. And, and it always starts to swing back. And just when you think, you know, wow, things are really right wing right now, or, oh, then it starts to swing a little bit left. And then you think, ooh, things are super liberal. So like, uh, what's that, uh, the Elliott Wave principle? Yeah. Yes. Is that the thing with the ink in it that? No. no oh. It's like a, a market term. It's a market term, but but you could apply you can apply it to anything and. Um, it's self you know, Social, social. Um, social, Di trends uh, in discourse? social social discourse, um, liberalism, right versus left. Um, I think that all goes up and down and starts to swing back. And yeah. when I think about kids today, and Mike talked about the sense of entitlement, we it's a much different society than when I was a kid in that, you know, every everybody gets an award on the baseball team now, and everybody gets a, there's no losers here. Right. There's only winners. There's That did not exist 20 years ago at all. I mean, Competition, it, I mean, it, there has to be some competition, I guess. I, um, well, how do, I mean, think about the sense of entitlement you're breeding into everybody when you're like, you know what? You're all MVPs, you know, and that's, no, we're not. Some people, Johnny is better at running than Stevie is, mm -hmm. and that's the way that it is. And you can't tell everybody that we're all equal. Oh, and it's hilarious. That's so, oh, that, so that's, that's, that's what you're getting at. Yeah. So the sense of entitlement and that everybody's a winner breeds this, the, the, the willingness of someone to succumb to self-pity, which might lead to suicide because... They realize once they realize that they're I wasn't not an, making that they're connection. not an MVP or oh no okay I'm sorry no but that's an interesting connection maybe oh, it is okay uh, I'm simply talking about the state of, of society today uh, parents the children we are creating and that might affect a bully too it might make sure might, that might be why the bully is bullying because everything's different everything is different and. When we were growing up, our parents thought we were going to be the last generation, that we were going to destroy the planet. And I think when they were growing up, their parents thought they were, oh, can you believe kids these days? You know, they have no respect for the milkman anymore. You know, I mean, it was a whole different set of problems of, you know, what's next? They're going to be on the telephone, you know, more than twice a week. And then now we all have phones in our pockets. And, and we're all being recorded. And we're all being recorded, some of us literally at this moment. Um, but... You know, I think every generation feels some concern about 
just because this this future generation is not doing things the way we did it, that it's uh, going to be technology, worse. Technology, the the effect of technology. You have to say it has never be, it's never been seen in human. In the human evolution before this level of technology that we have around us, um, that so I don't know if you can say how is that affecting things? Is that part the bullying? It makes bullying more possible. It makes it anonymous. But as we found out, everything's being recorded anyway. So I guess you're. It's not anonymous. Yeah, but, but the argument that this te that technology has never been seen and we don't know what the effect is going to be is sort of a, a baloney argument. That's think not, so? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, the Internet wasn't around. But, I mean, you know, when when people, you know, invented television and kids started watching TV, there were tons of people who said, this is going to ruin our, this is going to ruin everything. You can't put, these kids' minds are turning to mush, you know. The first person who took a plane ride, you know, was like, you're never going to catch me on one of those well, things. Well, you That's were just saying of... that the kids aren't talking anymore. They're just, they're looking at screens. And... I am saying that, but I'm okay. not saying that it's worse. This is the difference. Oh, okay. It's easy for people to say, well, this is going to be a horrible generation. It's not necessarily. It's going to be different. It's going to be very but different than what we had. But Mick, uh, isn't it an important distinction, obvious, that if somebody records, it's like if a kid at school records another kid, you know, talking smack about this group of people or, you know, having intercourse with this student or whatever, and they can blast it all over the Internet and, like, the whole school sees it and has it recorded, I mean, that's bullying. That's a game changer. That's a game changer. And that's yeah. way, that's what I think what Jim was kind of uh, intimating you towards, right? Um, yeah, or, I mean, even a politician that gets inadvertently recorded. I mean, they, they can't be authentic because of, you know, if they're authentic with how they really feel, they just get hammered from, from every direction. So it's the plastic smile. Uh, so... You know, it makes people afraid to really be authentic um, because they might be recorded and who knows who's going to see it. Um, and they have to see those students every day for years and years. Well, yeah. okay, let's talk, about, let's talk about recording for a minute here because we've, it's certainly come up in the last few weeks. And even, even you've mentioned it, Jim, in, in that, you know, geez, we've got this TV show now and we need to... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this is... You know, going out over the, you know. We're sitting here talking, and this is going out to right. literally millions of people. Right. I think almost a billion. Probably, the last, that's the last number I heard was around right. a billion. Uh, and, and then you have to, I mean, it's going out into space as well, so whatever aliens civilizations years, out there may absolutely. see it. Absolutely. And so it's easy to worry about, geez, what if, I say, what if I say something stupid or wrong? And that could happen because we're sitting here having a, very often. We, we live in a free country now. The problem is, if you say something, if I say, um, you know, um, everyone should have free health care. And, right. you know, right now I can say that. Um, yeah. But let's say a, an administration takes power and they, you know, any kind of liberal or left leaning person, um, they, don't, they don't like. If all of this is recorded, I mean, they can just, you know, search the data, the, the servers, and they can identify who they want to eliminate, and it happened before. Um, that is uh, a paranoid, delusional fantasy. Okay. I, I mean, so. well, you're afraid they're going to send a drone after you because you said, I mean. No, I'm saying that they could identify you. It happened before, and you know where it happened. They could identify My German us. teacher, yeah. who's 85 years old, said there were people that would speak up and say something negative about the um, government, and they would, in the morning, they would be gone and they were never seen again. That is a true fact, she told me. I believe it. I believe yeah. it. But do you believe that that can happen today? I do not think it can. Not today, but I'm saying in the future, if, if, if there is, you know, um, one more... 9-11 type experience in the country and it, I mean they're already look what happened in Boston um, with that uh, bombing thing that city went on martial law I mean like that they shut it down and it went on martial law like that and I one think more 9-11 thing in this country like that and and that could happen 
no, the residents of Boston were okay with that. They, they wanted, were. They wanted to they, be protected. They wanted to give up their, their, you know. I think that's a sensible thing to do. To some extent, but I mean, more people slip and die in their bathtub than, than are killed by terrorists. Well, um, so except it's when there's two of them of, running through the city with machine guns. Yeah. yeah. Then it's a bad day to be outside. So they say, hey, stay inside. Listen, I, the government, the government is spying on us. What's new? This has been going on forever. Uh, it's you know, just the level and the the detail that and the fact that it's all being recorded. I'm telling you, watch this show, Person of Interest. It comes on I've Thursday nights. Have you ever seen it? I've seen it. It's, yeah. See, this this is the problem. Hollywood gives us all this idea that this is happening, uh, and it doesn't. First of all, we our just, government is so inept that you know they can't run hardly any program without botching it. And this is the problem that people have with government: is that there's all this waste, there's all this stuff. But suddenly, we think that they're going to be brilliant enough to pinpoint this guy in this plaid shirt. I want him taken out in the middle of the night and no one to know about it. We can't Not do now. It's far-fetched right now. I'm it. just I mean, saying... They still do it in North Korea. I'm just saying, what what happens if there's a water shortage and a food shortage? And what happens if, um, you know... The what right happens if zombies take over the world? We're all going to be in a world of hurt. But there's no we reason... We should make to, a zombie movie, you know? There's no reason... Yeah. Somebody Buy has... Bitcoin somebody now. Somebody Bitcoin. hasn't done one of those in a long time. No, I... Okay, we're way we're very far oh. afield from parenting at, right. this, at this point. So right. maybe we should have a discussion about that. Zombies? No. Okay. Well, we could have a discussion about zombies too. All right. Dylan, uh, do you? Has, he's gone. I think he Dylan's gone. Okay. No, Dylan's gone. I'm All sure right. he's listening somewhere. Okay. But uh, Dylan would love a zombie movie. Um, does he like those kind of movies? He does. All right. Who doesn't? You, do who doesn't you like, like a zombie movie? Do you like those? Yeah, they're okay. Okay. When they're tastefully done. Becky doesn't like um, <laughs> scary movies. No. Trina doesn't. Yeah. Are we going to have a show about our our wives' viewing habits? Yeah. Yeah, we could. I don't think they Remember, would. Remember, this is we could have a, a right. billion. Uh, there's a billion we people now. We could have now. a movie. We could have a, a you know, movie, um, review some movies. We could, yeah. Well, that's for another time. Yeah, possibly okay. for another time. We review political movies to keep it on. Right. All right, back to let's try to get back to parenting, parenting for a minute. Since we did put that at the bottom of the screen, okay, let's pretend to talk about and that. Bullying. I want to remind people to call in 503-207-7135 if you're uh, listening live online. And again, we are going to be live on the air, uh, on the internet, and everything starting July 18th. So just visit us at wrongtvshow.com. Uh, you can hear our uh, past shows, look up our future schedule. All this good stuff. Um, now I lost my train of What's thought. What's the topic going to be on the live show? I don't know. We're going to have to come up with a good one for the live shows. I think we've, we've had some interesting topics in the past that would be good to sort of revisit car with repair, the live audience. Car repair tips. <laughs> I don't think we need car repair tips. Both. I think we're all fairly inept at that. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, so let's talk about parenting again for, for a minute here. Um, there's there's parents that you see out there that are completely hands off, much like my parents were. Right. Um, and uh, almost more dangerous than being hands off is this buddy system thing, where like I'm gonna smoke pot with my kid, or I'm gonna right. look how hip and cool I am, and um, it just drives me absolutely crazy. And um, y you know. You know parents like that? Um, yes. Yeah. There's more than you would think. Yeah. And you get a, a, a generation of hip, cool, younger people, like myself, uh, who, are, who have kids and are now parents. And we don't want to be the stiff parents of the past. Um, and I'm not necessarily advocating that kind of strict behavior and, and corporal punishment and that kind of stuff. But, uh, again, there's a happy medium. And I think... The biggest, the, the most important thing to me has been open discussion with your kids about whatever topic they want. Just make it, make it comfortable so that if you guys have questions, you come talk to us and we can talk about. If they want to talk about gay rights, if it's uncomfortable for you, you still need to have that discussion and get it out in the open. And listening to your kids' needs in that 
if they feel like they want someone to talk to, being open to therapy or things, things of that nature that can be helpful for kids. That people in the past, I mean, our parents, certainly therapy was not an option. For anybody. Right. If you're sick with a cold or the flu or an appendicitis, then you can go to the doctor. But mental health to, to go to someone, a professional mental health therapist, right, is like you must be nuts. Yeah. 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 And and it's and it's such still a stigma. to some extent. Yeah, it's a stigma still. I think. Oh, absolutely. More than more yeah. than anything else, nobody wants to talk about it. And um, you know, there are a lot of sort of I think. That's this is another parenting thing. Kids who blame everything, or excuse me, parents who blame everything their kids do on some disease. I'm getting tired of that. Right, oh, and the got, drug companies coming up with a drug to fix you right. Know, he's got diseases ADHD. That they make up. He's yeah. got this. He's got. We need to cater right. to him because he's got this disability. No, your kid's obnoxious, and they need to be brought in line, and you need to set some boundaries. Right. Kids need structure. They don't need you know. They need structure and boundaries. I believe absolutely. That, yeah. And you know, and they will fight it a little bit, but they will thank you later. Um, but just this free range stuff always ends up in disaster. Um, I mean, you know, both my parents were artists and, um, definitely very free form thinkers and, you know, what uh, is, what kind of an artist is your mom? Oh, a painter, a poet and a, uh, she did what's called linoleum block prints. So you take this big slab. Oh, of that's linoleum how she met your father because he was yes. doing the wood block prints. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think he was an art teacher, and she met him. Oh. He was a student of his, I believe. Where at? I don't know. I don't know. Sounds like a great Lifetime movie. It, it, yes, it would be. Um, and um, Linoleum block prints? Yeah. It's a piece of, you ever seen linoleum? Linoleum, and then you carve it the way you want it? You carve it the way you oh, want, okay. you ink it up, and then you oh. put it through a press. I'll okay. show you an example sometime. It's, it's Is it on a cylinder that rolls? Not the linoleum. Oh. No. It's flat. Okay. Um, Were they really indulgent to you? Or did they... No, my mom, in fact, I had... Did your dad smoke pot? I had... No. No, I had two very different realities. Did he drink? No. Alcohol? Nope. He was sober all the time? Yes. Um, but my dad's version of sober is not everybody else's version of sober. I mean, he was sort of a unique uh, character. He was a teetotaler. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, which is the same thing I am, pretty Did much. Did he these drink days. coffee? Not that I know of. Um, my mom was very strict, and I was with her till I was about fourteen, and then moved in with my dad, and he was the opposite of just very, you know, whatever you want to do, you do. So I sort of had both worlds. Uh, I would have liked something in the middle, um, but um, you know, I. I, I am lucky to be where I am today and to have gotten out of that. I think you've unscathed. turned into a pretty pretty good person. Yeah, I've become, uh, and that's through a lot of therapy, number one. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Well, people. why did they? Is therapy helpful? Very much so. I think everybody, you know, in Israel, when you're 18, you go to the army for a year. Right. Or whatever. Did you live in Israel? No. Oh, okay. I'm just, <laughs> just bringing that up. All right. Um, everybody should get a year of therapy. Uh, you know, man, state mandated. Do you think that males, do you think females and males together in the army is a good idea, or and women in combat? This has a lot to do with bullying. <laughs> well, look at the suicide rate in the military. Uh, well, off the charts or whatever, you know. Uh, and you go into that violent world, but you know, then World War II, were those did those people commit a lot of suicide? I. That's the tough thing is you, you look at historically, we didn't have a lot of the statistics we do today. I, one interesting thing I saw about the sex scandal in the military is that on a, on a numbers basis, there are more men sexually assaulted in the military than women. By other men? Presumably. Wow, like a reach around or I, I mean don't, like a... I don't know. I'm not getting into specifics, okay, okay. and I don't know what we can show on TV, so let's watch okay. Let's watch that there. But uh, right. I, I just thought that was an interesting number, and, I, and that how many people in the military were bullies, you know, or bullied? Um, I think it's a, it's a violent martial arena that you're trained to kill other humans um, on orders. Yeah, So true. You know, I mean, there's certain amount of um, aggressive, you know, behavior that's 
that's promoted. I mean, true. I, I guess you have to be that way if you're going to go into combat. Well, you have to be able to sort of blindly follow orders and well, do yeah, what you're told. Well, yeah, I, I think there's a, you know, there's a certain tribe of humans or, or, militaristic. Um, I think males especially. Or I mean, as a kid, I remember playing army all the time. Oh, it's built into us. Yeah, for sure. And is it is it something that we're enculturated with, or is it in no. our DNA? Yeah, and this is another sort of parenting thing that I've seen a lot of lately that drives me nuts. Is this, uh, you know, I don't want to push my uh, my sexually sexual identity values on on my kid. Just because he's a boy doesn't mean that he needs to have guns and he can play with pink things and have long hair and all that stuff. And that's fine. They can do that. But um, this idea that we have pushed male values onto boys, like playing with army men and all this stuff, and pushed pink pretty things on girls, and that's why they like that, is just crap. Yeah, I think... So much of that is built in. It's instinctual. Yeah, it's just kind of instinctual. You put two kids that Women were born in a, in, a, in a room yeah. uh, with no other inputs, and the boy is going to go for the guns, and... Um, the girl, you know, will go for the hairbrush or something like that. Now, there's exceptions to that, to every right. rule. But, um, you know, And that's where that gender identity, I mean, some people are, I really think, are born gay. I mean, they're... Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a, cho it's not a choice that people make. I, I mean, I, I think it can be. I mean, I think some people are bisexual, um, and they can go, you know, either way. I think they're greedy. I think... They're greedy? It, yeah. They want both. They want oh. both men and women. Oh, okay. Mike, that's Mike's they version of a like joke. Me. I got it, Mike. Okay, that was got funny. it, Mike. That was good. Right. Um, the, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a nature versus nurture sort of discussion. And, um, you know, I think some people are born gay and some people some people are the victims of sexual abuse, which can mess with your sexual right. identity exactly. very much. And, and you know, um, I don't know whether you call that a choice yeah, or not. As crazy as my father was, that's one thing that never, that... I don't have to deal with that. So, yeah, it, um, you know, and and it's and there's kids out there who are going through that who are not getting support from their parents, who know that they would not be accepted and don't have a peer group, and I think they're much more likely to commit suicide and do things like that because, imagine if your if you felt like your parents hated what you were, right? Something that is really your core, core being, to who you are, right? And and your parents find it disgusting, uh, you know, if, if they're if they're religious or for whatever reason. Uh, that's got to be just a horrible thing to go through. Um, so, you know, we're, we're coming towards the end of the show here. Um, so I want to... Uh, yeah, go ahead, Mike. What you got? So, I don't know. I, um, I've just realized over the years that people aren't going to like me for any reason. Some people. Reason. Some that's people right. won't yeah, like yeah, you. Some people, that's just, that's just yeah. life, and you'll never get away with anything, whether you're, you know, five or... So now I use it to fuel me. So I'm trying to give these kids like kind of a, a weapon. I mean, that's that's the only way that I can kind of figure it out in my brain is just let it fuel me because this is life. And if, if people don't like you, it means that you're doing something that they're probably jealous of or there's a, you know, you're, like Nick, you were saying that you dressed how you wanted to and you wore blue earrings and, you know, there's a uniqueness, and maybe there's that, that jealousy that they, they mm -hmm. think they want to do that, and you can't. So I would just encourage people to just, I know it's difficult, but just try to let it fuel you. Mm -hmm. As long as they're not, like, beating you up and throwing you in the hospital every five minutes. No, absolutely. So you mean get mad? No, I mean just, <laughs> like, let it fuel you to go achieve your goals. Go okay. To be successful in, so, in whatever you okay. do. Okay. Go, go, go achieve your goals. Right. I use it to fuel me now. I That not everyone liked you? Yes. Yeah. Everybody but wants to be I liked. I think that's a natural like instinct. Try, right. In the morning you say, I want to try to be liked yep. all day today. Yep. Well, I, so you can cue up the outro there, Mike. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, we've covered a lot of topics today. I think, and I still think we need to have a solid show about mental health because I think it's such a big, definitely it's such a big issue. And I think that is, that's and a how huge spirituality, part. Uh, plays into that it's a huge part of bullying and parenting and all these different things is getting your kids the support and the help that they need to become successful human beings and 
It doesn't happen. How would you have changed that had you won the school board? How would you have brought that into the oh, man. the school board po position number four? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, we <laughs> thanks for putting me on the spot, both of you. Uh, I think that, you know, we just need to do the best job. We can't overcome poor parenting. I mean, we're you just can. not going to be able to make up for that. Can. We can do our best, and we can cr provide those outlets in schools like counselors and make sure that we have enough people there that are supporting the kids and s giving them a safe place to come and discuss things. Um, but at the end of the day, those kids if have to go home. they got bad parents. they got to go home to those crappy parents yeah. at the end of the day. And we need to work to stop creating bad parents, you know. And um, I, don't, I think it all starts with education. Um, because, uh, you know, I... And, and part of that is a generational thing. Mm -hmm. You have to break that at some point in some generation, you have to break that cycle. Yep. Yeah, I think it is a, a cyclical thing. Uh, so I want to remind people that we're going to be starting live July 18th. Uh, you can check our schedule and everything else at uh, wrongtvshow.com. And uh, we'll that's be... our next show? That's the July next show 18th. is July 18th. We're going to be taking a little bit of a break between now and then. Uh, but starting July 18th, uh, we are going to be on the first and third Thursday of every month at 8 p.m. So we'll have a, a regular time slot uh, to, to build a devoted following. Uh, we'll get a lot of people to call in and um, argue with us and tell us why we're stupid. And um, and then I get to hang up on you. And that's that's really the Because it's our of it. show. Yeah, yeah. That's, or your show. It's our show. We've got all the power. And then you get to say, here's why you're and wrong. And I get to say, here's why you're wrong, and then I'll have Mike disconnect me. But uh, I'm only half kidding. We'll, we'll listen. I want to hear all these uh, diverse opinions and, and, and feelings on things. And um, that's what it's all about. So check us out, wrongtvshow.com. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you in July.